Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and we are finally moving back to discussing Pokemon Legends Arceus, the massive open world Pokemon game developed by Game Freak that is due out at the very beginning of next year. Today I wanted to talk about some of the complications involving open world games, and how I think this one feature could really help Game Freak make the best open world experience while also giving players a sense of progression. With that being said, let's jump straight into the video. Now, for those of you who have never played an open world game, it's important to know right off the bat that one of the biggest challenges that game developers typically have with them is trying to give the player character and the player themselves a sense of progression. You want to allow the world to be open and allow the player to explore at their heart's content, but you also want to give them a sense that the story is moving forward. Some of these things create challenges. For example, how do you structure the difficulty of mobs and bosses? How do you instill upon the player the addition of new items, new weapons, new tools that allow them to really use the world in a better way? These are a lot of discussions that game developers typically have, and it's something that you always see done differently in different open world games. I'll sit specifically with Nintendo here and use the example of Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. They did around two to three things to kind of moderate the experience and put in some constraints on the player character so they couldn't just walk up to Ganon, fight him, and beat him now. Of course, because of how open the game is, you actually could do that. You could go right to the final boss, you could beat him once you got off the Great Plateau, which was the starting area in the game. It was essentially a little tutorial island in the world of Hyrule that you had to get through, and then you get access to the rest of the world and then everything opens up. But they had three main ways of really keeping you within constraints. The first of which is how you unlocked the minimap. You had to find towers that would then give you that area on your map, which would allow you to see where you're gonna be exploring. The next thing that they did is they added the breakable weapons, the durability system. This meant that you were always trying to find new weapons, you were always trying to improve your weaponry, and you always had to go into dungeons and beat bosses to get more weapons. Now, of course, once you unlocked the Master Sword, this became less of a problem because the sword would recharge, it wouldn't actually break. You just had to wait for an allotted period of time for it to eventually gain its full use back. The next thing that they did was probably... I would say the most interesting thing, and it was the Blood Moon. There were different encampments of bosses throughout the world of Hyrule, different ones full of moblins and bokoblins and those skeleton creatures, which I can't uh, remember off the top of my head right now. And every so often, the moon would rise at night, and it would be what is called a Blood Moon. And during this Blood Moon, all of these boss characters, all of these mobs, all of these guys that you had already faced and killed and collected their loot, they would respawn. This meant that the world was constantly fighting against you. You had to constantly be on your toes, and you couldn't always just backtrack to an area you had already conquered and just be totally easy and free. Of course, at night, mobs would also rise from the ground, and you had to deal with that too. But it, these were complications that were put in Link's way in the game to really force you not necessarily to be on a linear path, but would force you to play the game with some thought instead of just blazing through and trying to get to the end. Now, before we go any further, I just want to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them aren't subscribed to the channel. And for that, I say, what are you doing? If you never want to miss an upload when we're talking about Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, Legends Arceus, side games, older main series games, general Pokemon news, general Nintendo news, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below so you never miss anything. With that being said, let's get right back into the topic. With a Pokemon open world game, the discussion of how you put constraints on the player character is a bit more interesting. Now, from what we know about Legends Arceus already, it seems as if this starting town that we've seen in the first trailer is really the only significant human settlement in the Sinnoh region at this time. Once you leave this settlement, the world is wild. The world is full of wild Pokemon, wild environments, places that have not been tamed by human yet. And that opens up a lot of possibilities in terms of how the geography of the region looks. In the Sinnoh region of what we know, there's towns and routes and all of these things dotting the landscape, and it basically keeps you on a linear path. But in an open world game, you're going to be able to traverse the mountains, the fields, the forests, the oceans, even though Sinnoh doesn't have a ton of ocean, there is some. The snowy tundras. These are areas, the swamps. These are areas that you're going to have to traverse with your Pokemon and with tools and different objects. Now, 
not to go into spoiler territory too much, but we have seen from some of the first leaks of Legends Arceus, which came out back in February, that there are going to be new forms of travel and traversal around the region. How that works with Pokemon and with tools is anyone's guess. We're going to have to wait for a new trailer to go into that. That is going to be a way that Game Freak constrains the player character in terms of the items you get, which allow you to traverse different territories, I would assume, and also the Pokemon that allow you to perform different overworld actions. Think of the HMs from typical Pokemon games, but it's the characteristics of the Pokemon. Want to fly or soar somewhere? You're going to need a massive bird Pokemon, maybe a Star Raptor. You're not going to be able to do that with a Starly, I would imagine, like you could in a normal Pokemon game where you can give a bird that can't carry you fly, and then you can just fly anywhere you want. You're not going to be able to give a Wingull fly and then Wingle can carry you. You're going to need a Pelipper. You're going to need a Drift Blim. These are going to be ways that it's going to keep traversal more centralized and you're going to have to progress through the game and level up your team in order to move further into the region. I would also imagine that there's going to be level scaling. If you had to ask me, I would say that the Pokemon are going to grow in difficulty as the player character grows and as his Pokemon grow. So if you were to leave, let's assume for a moment, just for the sake of this discussion, that the central town is where Twin Leaf Town is. I don't think it is, but in Legends Arceus, that's where the game, where that starting town is. If you were to trek to the furthest point of the region with, in this example, your level five starter Pokemon, the Pokemon up to as far as you can go would still be of those low levels. But as you raise up that Pokemon, the Pokemon in the wild are going to also be raised in level. This is level scaling. This is something that we thought maybe the DLC would include in it sort of did. If you beat the game, the Pokemon were at level 60. If you hadn't beaten the game, the Pokemon would be lower level. But that was the same thing with the wild area in the main game. So the level scaling feature really didn't exist. These are all things that we can assume are going to be in Pokemon Legends Arceus, and we'll know more once we get a trailer. But the biggest thing that I think we have seen nothing of yet, and I've talked about it a little bit in my Dark Rye and Cresselia video, which if you have not seen it, there's a card in the corner right now. It's a short, I'd encourage you to check it out. I'm very happy with the theory, is that legendary Pokemon are going to be used as bosses, as markers and challenges in the world. And the reason I think this could be done is because they have some canonicity to deal with right here. I don't think you're necessarily going to be able to catch the legends of the Sinnoh region in this game. The Regis, Cresselia, Darkrai, Arceus, Dialga, Palkia, Garatina. And the reason I don't think you're going to be able to catch them is, canonly, they have to be in the Sinnoh region when we get to modern day. When we get to Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum and the events of those games with Team Galactic, these Pokemon exist. And legendaries like Dialga, Palkia, Arceus, uh, Garatina, there's one of them unless Arceus chooses to produce another one. As we saw in the post, in the uh, the special content from Heart Gold and Soul Silver, Arceus can create new versions of Dialga, Palkia, and Garatina at will. But these Pokemon need to exist in the Sinnoh region when we get up to the main line games. I think you're going to have to face these Pokemon, these legendaries, these mythicals, as bosses and as gating to keep you from moving forward in order to progress. So in order to get out of the main starting areas, you might have to deal with the lake trios of that general area. You might have to do something like uh, get Pokedex entries for them, study them, and then gain access to move forwards. If you're trying to get up to the snowy reaches of the Sinnoh region, you might have to deal with Regice. You might have to battle that boss in order to progress up north. If you're trying to get to New Moon Island and Full Moon Island, maybe Iron Island, if it's in this game, you're going to have to deal with Reggie Steel. You're going to have to deal with the presence of Darkrai and Cresselia roaming the region. These legendaries could be natural barriers for progression, and it could be a really good test for you and your Pokemon. I also think there's a chance that you could have some really cool things like Spiritomb. Spiritomb, for all we know, might be created during this time. You might have to deal with an ancient form of Spiritomb that is incredibly powerful. Maybe you have to seal Spiritomb in the odd keystone. Maybe that's something you take part in with the villagers of this village. All of this is to say that legendaries are going to play a central point, and I think just as the giant mech robot uh, guardians played this role in Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, I think the legendary Pokemon, specifically the Regis, the uh, Spiritomb, Cresselia, Darkrai, Azelf, Yuxi, Mesprit, they're going to play the role of Gatekeeper. You might even have to deal with a major 
boss battle at the end of the game when you get up to the spear pillar to deal with Arceus. You might have to face Dialga and Palkia. Maybe it's a double battle against Dialga and Palkia, two of your Pokemon against these two gods, in order to summon Arceus, in order to get an audience with Arceus. Who knows what the story will be. You're going to have to deal with Dialga and Palkia, maybe Giratina. There's so much to this game that we ultimately don't know. Will Giratina even play a role? Is, this, is the distortion world something that you might have to conquer? There's a whole separate area, the fight area, where you had Stark Mountain and you had Heatran. Is that going to be accessible in this game? And what role could Heatran play as a legendary boss? What could you find there that you would have to deal with Heatran? Could you be helping to establish a battle frontier of sorts? Who knows? It's a, it's a, the, the most appealing thing about Legends Arceus is that they're taking a region that is well established in the lore, that is well established in terms of the settlements and the people that live there and the stories of the people that live there, and we're going backwards to a more wild time. And that allows us to really put in place a lot of the established lore of these legendaries and of what I ultimately think will be boss battles in Pokemon Legends Arceus. With that being said, what do you guys think of this idea? Do you think legendaries are going to serve the role of bosses in this game? Do you think they'll be catchable or do you think they'll just be someone you battle? I would love to know what you guys think down in the comments. And if you have not subscribed yet to the channel, like I mentioned before, please be sure to do that because it does a ton to support me. We are almost at 4,000 subscribers and it'd be really awesome to hit it soon. With that being said, I've been Linky and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.